My charger's heater box was looking a bit rough, so I pulled it out and restored it. I carefully dismantled the heater box, starting with the electrical parts. When I got to the heater core, I found a big nasty mouse nest packed in with it. All of the steel parts had surface rust and the foam insulation was deteriorated. So I ordered a heater box rebuild kit from Detroit Muscle Technologies. There was another nasty mouse nest inside the glove compartment, so I bought a replacement for it too. While I waited for the new parts to arrive, I turned my attention to the area under the dash. I'm inspecting the underside of the dashboard and everything looks pretty unmolested. The mice chewed on the uh, insulation. So I think I'll pull that down, replace it with Dynamat. Same over here. This tarboard stuff can really kind of retain the smell of the mice. And that black seam sealer has gotten very brittle with age. So I've been flaking it off and I'm going to use Eastwood a brushable seam sealer. Here you can see how flaky this old seam sealer is. It just comes right off. Barely have to, barely have to work at it and it comes right off. Anyway, I'll get this all cleaned up. Replace everything that needs to be replaced, like these body seams. I'll come back through and brush in some Eastwood seam sealer. After removing all of the factory insulation and seam sealer, I prepared the sheet metal for new sealer and Dynamat. I sloughed off the loose rust with wire brushes and steel wool. Then I treated the remaining surface rust with Rust-Oleum brand Rust Reformer. Here's the passenger side kick panel after I treated it with Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer, the black stuff, and Eastwood Seam Sealer, the gray stuff. Once the sealer dried, I installed Dynamat. Same process on the driver's side, but this time I've included a photo showing how I made a template out of packing paper, then used the template to accurately cut the dynamat. After that, I went on to cover the firewall and tow boards. To access this panel, I had to remove the parking brake, so I took the opportunity to clean and lubricate it. I also cleaned and repainted the dash brackets and windshield wiper arms, since they too were obstructing my Dynamat installation work. Here are those wiper arms back where they belong. Next, I cleaned and reinstalled the factory firewall insulation. Getting back to the heater box, I pressure tested and cleaned the heater core. I also verified that the blower motor was working. Here's a quick test of the fan motor that I pulled out of the 66 Dodge Charger. And before I put it back in, I want to do a proper test. So, I'm hooking up these two wires to my uh, variable DC source. And let's see what happens. Two amps, not bad.
Looks good. By the time my kit arrived, all of my parts were cleaned and painted, ready for reassembly. The instructions were easy to follow and I didn't encounter any problems during reassembly of the unit. I retested the blower motor in the heater box and, unsurprisingly, it drew more amperage under a load. Even so, at 8.5 amps, it's well below the 20 amp limit allowed by the fuse. I also made sure all the switches worked as expected. In case you're interested, this is what you can see when your glove compartment is removed. And here's what the new glove box looks like. This is a driver's side fresh air vent, which is operated by a push-pull cable. After cleaning it and its hardware, I glued on a new seal that came with the heater box kit. Here's that vent reinstalled under the dash. And here's the heater box back in the car. Thanks for watching.